We start in Ukraine, where President Volodymyr Zelensky has accused Russia of waging a gas war against Europe. This is after the Russian firm Gazprom announced it would be further cutting gas supplies through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline to Germany to 20 per cent. That is half the current rate. Gazprom is saying it has to carry out maintenance uh, repairs. Germany said it could see no reason for the limits. To cushion against these actions, last week the European Commission urged EU member states to cut their gas use by 15 per cent over the next seven months. It says the target is voluntary, but will become legally binding if Moscow turns off the taps this summer. But since it was announced, the uh, EU has faced resistance from some governments. So later today, energy ministers are meeting to try to strike a deal. I asked Ben McWilliams, who's research analyst at the European economic think tank Bruegel, what sort of deal would be acceptable? So indeed, the context for this agreement is that Russia is still weaponizing gas supplies to Europe. Uh, Russia has significantly cut supplies. And so far in Europe, we have made up for this by boosting imports. But we have now reached the threshold to where these can go. And everything else for the winter needs to come on the gas reduction side. As you say, the European Commission has proposed a 15 percent blanket cut by all member states. But the opposition to this comes particularly from southern European member states, who feel themselves to be less dependent on Russian gas and feel that they need to make a smaller reduction, while particularly northwestern member states should make larger reductions. Some of the some of the sticking points then are particularly on the percentage reduction by member states, and secondly, on the way which this will be enforced. So is the Commission by themselves allowed to declare a gas emergency, or do certain member state capitals have to agree that we are in an emergency before these efforts shift from making a best effort to 15%? to a mandatory cut. The, the thing is, if they can't agree on cutting gas use by 15% when the supply is there, what do they do if the supply is turned off? That's exactly the risk. Um, if Russia turns off the supply, demand will be cut because there will not be molecules to be consumed. And the question is, as the European Union, can we agree a coordinated cut which will be least cost, cause the least political risk, and lead to a un united European response to Russia? Or the, the worry is, do we get to the risk in October, November, December, when the gas is cut and we don't have very warm days uh, to sit here and decide, and suddenly we get in, into times of tension, and that's where you could see things escalating? Interestingly, as you just mentioned, today Russia is already cutting the flows through the Nord Stream. You said by half. Actually, it's about it's half of a few days ago. It's 20% of normal levels. So, in fact, Russia is already forcing us to make these decisions now, which is, in a sense, a good thing, mm. because it, we don't have the space to postpone this decision for October now. We, we have to decide today already. Uh, and what effect does this all have on the energy bills for households and businesses across the EU and the UK? Essentially, it depends on how effective this plan can be. Uh, gas is consumed in different sectors across the economy, in the electricity sector, in the industrial sector, and in households, which feeds into our gas and energy bills. And the more successful Europe can be in reducing the gas demand for power and for industry means more free gas for households to consume and ultimately a lower price increase. That being said, as we've already seen since last October, prices have increased and prices are likely to continue to increase, particularly as governments allow firms to increasingly pass through costs to consumers, which the same as it is in the UK, there is a delay between wholesale price increases and the regulated price increases, which is what consumers pay. And if they were looking to alternative supplies, where might those come from? Sure. So the big one for Europe is LNG, liquefied natural gas uh, imported by sea. And that's a significant increase so far uh, in Europe this year, which has largely offset the reduction in Russian flows. The pipelines coming into Europe from Norway, from North Africa, from Azerbaijan are pretty much full and there's not much spare capacity there. Interestingly, in fact, the UK has turned into a re-exporter to Europe. The UK is importing LNG from the rest of the world, and then via pipeline to Belgium and Netherlands, uh, exporting a bit of this back to Northwest Europe. But LNG is the, bit, is the big one here. And so far, this has already been maxed out. Europe is importing every molecule it can, and there's little space here. And that's why now things have come to a front, and leaders have realized or got to the point where they need to discuss demand reduction and hence the discussions we're seeing last week and today.